Hello children, how are you all? Hope you all are fine and doing well. My name is Nanesh. Welcome to our channel, Phoenix Plaza. Children, today we are going to have an important session. What is that topic actually we are going to learn uh, is actually a spherical mirrors here actually. So very, 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 very important. So what is a spherical mirrors? What are the types of spherical mirrors? And uh, what are the applications? Yeah. Children, first we must know what actually spherical mirrors. Let us start today's topic. Spherical mirrors. Spherical mirrors. Okay. Richland, before going to start of uh, spherical mirrors, I have a few questions. Just try to answer here. The first question is that uh, which mirror? Children, think just means I'll give you options here. A plane mirror concave mirror children pause the video just try to answer these questions here so which mirror do we use as a shaving mirror you have to tell whether it's a plane mirror we use as a shaving mirror or convex mirror or convex concave mirror so which mirror we use as a rear view mirror so out of these three just you have to think and select so periscope so which mirror do we prefer as a periscope a plane mirror or a convex mirror or concave mirror and the reasons also very important this is what actually today the what we can say the complete the topic what we are going to learn is all about these three points only i can say that so if you want to understand this we have to understand what are the types of mirrors that is the spherical mirrors and what are the like you know characteristics of the image formed by the concave mirror and the convex mirror even plane mirror also and what are the rules which we will, we will follow uh, to make a ray diagram these are the very very important so before that dear children just put a message in its comment box just you put an answer so which one is the shaving mirror which one is the rear view mirror which one is a periscope okay fine children what is a spherical mirror so spherical mirror means don't think that something is like a gola like this you know uh, generally we'll be talking what the shape of the earth spherical so spherical means don't think there's a three dimensional so which means what these mirrors are part of a sphere these mirrors are a part of a sphere now we will see how can we make spherical mirrors and what are the nature what are the natures of different spherical mirrors let us see children let's assume it's a glass halosphere it is glass halosphere obviously it is a transparent as i'm saying it's a glass you know glass halosphere and it children now let us make a two cuts like this here so here one cut I made, here one I cut made here. So now remove this part, this middle part just you remove, remove this part. So this is like you know two dimensional view. Uh, in fact, uh, we get like this, something like this, okay, like this. So like this we get, means this is a part which we will get, one part you will get like this. Whereas another part you will get like this. But actually, now or not, just uh, we will be seeing only two dimensional view only. Three dimensional will become too difficult to explain, to discuss, to draw the diagram on board. So, we are going to consider only two dimensional pictures of mirrors. Okay, fine. Now, okay, here we got two curved surfaces. Two curved surfaces. So, children, before uh, going to learn about the types of mirror, first we should know the nature of the curved surface. It's very, very important. Dear children, this surface we can call it as a convex surface. Convex surface. Very, very important. Convex surface. Okay. Convex. Convex surface. Whereas this inside surface, inside one, we can call it as a concave. It is a concave surface. Even it is for this also. So, the concave. As a children, just you recall cave means how it will be inside, right? Cave will be like this only. So, this part is a concave. You remember like this. It is a concave. So, cave method. So, it will be inside like this. So, this is what actually very, very important. So, convex surface means what it is a bulged one it is. Outer one I can say. It is a outer surface. It is simply it is a outer surface it is. Whereas concave surface is inner surface. Concave surface is inner surface. Now with the help of this only now we are going to understand what is a convex mirror, what is a concave mirror. If this convex surface surface is silvered, children, it's very very important. 
if this convex surface is silvered then what happened this concave surface acts like a reflecting surface act like a reflecting surface then the mirror so produced the mirror so made is called actually concave mirror still it's very very important what is a concave mirror the spherical mirror in which outer side is silvered such a way that inner side acts like a reflecting surface is called actually concave mirror so now we will be learning about the terms related to the concave mirror first under the spherical mirrors dear children we will be learning about the special concept again concave mirror children once again i repeat what is a concave mirror come on think outer side is silvered so that inner side acts like a reflecting surface if we want to make a image of any object should we keep object or here dear children at x or at y we cannot keep object at x we have to keep object y and y always object must be placed in front of a reflecting surface this is silver it is a behind the mirror you cannot get any type of image if you can keep any object behind it so at any cost we must keep the object in front of reflecting surface which means what we will be considering the light rays to come from left to right only of course it is one of the important points of the even sign convention also we will be discussing that also okay children fine the first word which we are going to learn very very important thing is that center of curvature children what is center of curvature for concave mirror concave mirror dear children as i told you that it's a very 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 important term it is so this point only we are going to call it as a center of curvature which means what dear children so don't you think that this uh, what are you know spherical part the curvature is a part of a sphere of course then that sphere has some center right yes that center only we are going to call it as a center of curvature means the center of glass halo sphere in which in which this spherical mirror was a part previously spherical mirror was a part previously is called what center of curvature is very very important dear children and the geometric center so it might be curved or it might be plane what it may be the mirror dear children so it has some geometric center right yes the geometric center of this spherical mirror only we can call it as a pole so second term is actually pole what is pole dear children so very 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 important what is a pole the geometric center of the spherical mirror is called pole and dear children here the axis or the line which is passing through which is passing through center of curvature and a pole is called principal axis is called principal axis what is the principal axis the axis which is passing through the center of curvature and the pole of the spherical mirror is called actually principal axis very very important so principal axis so the third one which we are learning is, is the principal axis principal axis and each one especially in the case of concave mirror concave mirror so after if any light ray is coming like this if any light ray is coming like this let us suppose so what happens dear children after reflection after reflection these light rays in the case of concave mirror the what are the light rays which are coming and incidenting on concave mirror after reflection they all will go to they all will pass through a common point on the principal axis common point on the principal axis is called dear children is called focus or we can call it as a principal foci also this is will represent with a letter called capital f so what is a capital f principal focus it's very 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 important means the point on the principal axis through which all reflected light rays will pass children we are defining principal focus for what we are defining for concave mirror strictly it's very 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 important it's very very important so in the case of concave mirror only we will define focus how we will define the focus so the point and the principal axis through which all reflected light rays are passing all reflected light rays passing is called actually principal focus and each line from here to here the distance between center of curvature and pole center of curvature and pole is called radius of curvature is called actually radius of curvature so children the fourth one which we discussed is a focus focus 
and the fifth point is radius of curvature children these terms are very 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 important radius of curvature radius of curvature and children here the distance between pole and focus is called focal length is called focal length so next one is what is it is a focal length so focal length we will represent with a small f small f focus will be capital f it's very important center of curvature capital c pole capital p and axis means you can take c p x some c p o we can take so here radius of curvature will be with a capital r so the children <coughs> these are the few terms which are related to the concave mirror it's very very important so very means very much important so once again look at here what is center of curvature the center of the glass halo sphere in which spherical mirror is a part is called center of curvature what is pole the geometric center of the spherical mirror is called pole what is the principal axis the axis which is connecting center of curvature and the pole of course it passes obviously through focus also is called principal axis next focus ritual in after reflection especially in the case of concave mirror all reflected light rays passes through a common point on the principal axis is called focus or principal foci next what is the radius of curvature the distance between center of curvature and pole of course you know, indirectly we can say it is the radius of that sphere which we consider actually is the radius of curvature next the last one is focal length the distance between focus and pole of the spherical mirror is called focal length children did you notice one very 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 important children this is a point which we have to understand so that we will make a beautiful ray diagrams with the concave mirror and as well as the convex mirror what is that beauty children if you can see this pole sorry focus this should be exactly between center of curvature and pole only center of curvature for example from pole to center of curvature you are taking 10 cm just focus must be at 5 cm exactly middle so when you take like that of course it lies like that only and when we are making ray diagrams also if you can take like that we will get a beautiful diagrams so here i can say here radius of curvature will be double than that of the focus focal length so we can write like this r is equal to 2f it's very 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 important radius of curvature of a spherical mirror for any spherical mirror is double than that of the focal length or the focal length of any spherical mirror is half of the radius of curvature of that spherical mirror half of the radius of curvature of that spherical mirrors so children these are the terms related to the concave mirror now we will learn so why a concave mirror is called as a converging mirror and uh, in order to make a ray diagrams so what are the important light rays which we need to consider we will discuss now children now we will discuss the convenient rays which are very important in order to make a ray diagrams very very important dear children so if you consider any object in front of any mirror dear children we will be getting lakhs of light rays crores of light rays in all directions but among all dear children few light rays are very very convenient to us in order to make a ray diagrams now we will discuss what are the convenient rays to make ray diagrams for a concave mirror we'll see so dear children let us stay here first light ray so if any light ray is coming parallel to the principal axis of concave mirror it's very important children so it is the center of curvature here is focus here is pole dear children if any light ray is moving parallel to the principal axis children it's repeat very very important if any light ray is going parallel to the principal axis of concave mirror after reflection what happens this light ray will pass through the focus very 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 important i repeat once if any light ray nature means like this just you imagine lakhs of parallel light rays are coming parallel light rays that to parallel to the principal axis of concave mirror then after reflection all light rays have to pass through the focus it's very very important now dear children let us consider one more light ray so it is a center of curvature and here is a focus now dear children if any light ray is passing through the focus like this if any light ray is passing through the focus very very important so if any light ray is passing through the 
focus of concave mirror after reflection what happens children after reflection it has to move it has to move like this it has to move parallel to the principal axis very 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 important children just of course you have to make it with the scale so that you will get a beautiful diagrams children look at here these two diagrams very very important if any light ray is coming parallel to the principal axis after reflection it is passing through the focus but whereas if any light ray is passing through the focus dear children after reflection what is happening it is going parallel to the principal axis it is going parallel to principal axis. so these two are vice versa it's very very important now dear children look at here so this is a uh, center of curvature here is focus and here is pole Listen, now third light ray is very 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 important third light ray if any light ray is passing through the how it is moving the children it is passing through the center of curvature children then what happens if any light ray is passing through the center of curvature of concave mirror so very 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 important the children after reflection what happens you know it gets its path is retraced it is path is retraced but why its path is retraced when it passes through the center of curvature and incidents on the surface of concave mirror the children if any light ray which is passing through the center of curvature incidenting on the mirror this will be the normal incidence this will be the normal incident for that point that point if any light ray detection means as already we discussed in the case of plane mirror what happens if any light ray hits the mirrored surface normally then what will happen it bounces back in the same path its path is retraced again so it's a very important detection any light ray you can consider if you want you can take one more light ray if any light ray is passing like this through center of curvature then what happens after reflection its path is retraced it bounces back in the same path this is a third one it's very important now dear children one more light ray which we are going to consider is it is center of curvature here is focus here is pole if any light ray is striking the mirror surface at a pole for suppose dear children it is incidenting such a way that such a way that so the angle of incidence let us say it is a theta theta is the angle of incidence then what happens dear children according to laws of reflection children it's very important whatever may be the nature of the mirror either, either it is a plane mirror convex mirror concave mirror, whatever it may be whatever may be the surface whether it is a rough surface or a smooth surface always loss of reflection holds good it's very important in that the first one is what you children the angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection so if any light ray strikes a concave mirror like this such that theta is a angle of incidence then what happens to you children so the light ray gets reflected gets reflected like this such a way that the angle of reflection also here how much it will be it will be theta only it will be theta okay children fine so these are the very 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 important light rays <coughs> which we are going to consider in order to consider the ray diagram for concave mirror so one second i repeat here if any light ray it is better if you will note down okay please note down if any light ray is coming parallel to the principal axis and strikes the concave mirror surface then after reflection it has to pass through the focus whereas if any light ray is passing through the focus and strikes the concave mirror then after reflection it passes parallel to the principal axis whereas the third one dear children if any light ray is passing through the center of curvature and incidence on concave mirror surface its path is retraced why because it is a normal incidence it is normal incidence at the same time dear children if any light ray is striking the mirror surface especially we have taken the case where it is striking the pole with a certain theta angle theta angle then this light ray gets reflected back with the same angle okay dear children so with the help of this only now we are going to make a ray diagrams now we'll see the first ray diagram now now we'll see the first case where object is placed at infinity in front of a concave mirror chill what actually we are going to discuss chill first you have to concentrate where we are keeping the object then after that we are going to study the position of the image 
and its nature we are going to study at the same time its size also we are going to see whether it is a diminished or equal size or highly magnified which we are going to discuss so here dear children so object is placed in infinity so it's very very important thing is that so when object is placed in infinity we will get a parallel beam of light we will get i repeat once so whenever object is considered at infinity so whatever the light rays we which which we will get or what actually parallel light rays only so obviously as object is placed in infinity so we get light rays like this so first light ray let us see here is second light ray so how the light rays are coming to children they have to come parallel to the principal axis only and dear children as already we learned in a convenient rays if any light ray is coming parallel to the principal axis of concave mirror what happens after reflection it has to pass through focus so this light ray should reflect like this so that has to pass through the focus and here here also same way this light ray also should pass through the focus so now where they are meeting actually at this point called focus it's very 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 important here so after reflection first thing you have to notice whether the light rays are meeting or not if light rays are meeting so what is children so if light rays are meeting we will get a real image so what is a real image how the real image is formed dear children so real image is a point where all reflected light rays meet is very very important so very very important and the point where the reflected light rays are going to meet is a position of the image now dear children look at in this case as the object is placed at infinity now where the light rays are meeting at the focus first point we have to notice so light rays are meeting at focus so as the light rays are meeting dear children definitely image is formed so is it real image or virtual image obviously it is a real image only why real image is formed by actual meeting of light rays by actual meeting of light rays so let us write here characteristics here the first one we have to write the position of the image so here image is formed image is formed at focus at focus and what is its nature dear children what is its nature it is real image it is real image dear children by default all real images are inverted so even you can write it is a inverted image all real images by default it is a inverted only but dear children what is the size a highly diminished image this we can call it as a highly diminished image it is what it is a highly diminished image so children so this these are the characteristics of the image form when the object is placed at infinity but dear children here you may get a one doubt actually sir as okay object is at infinity but is it compulsory that the parallel light ray should come parallel to the principal axis only of course no since very very important so as i said that when object is placed at infinity we will get parallel beam of light it's okay but it is not compulsory that the parallel beam of light should come parallel to the principal axis only so if not what happens if we are getting parallel beam of light only but not parallel to the principal axis like a, let us take it as oblique incidence let us take in the case of oblique incidence how the image is formed where the image is formed and what are the characteristics of the image formed let us see once again case 1 a now it is a b <coughs> so here just imagine let us take here is consider is a concave mirror is the principal axis and here is a center of curvature and focus this is a pole dear children so again i repeat it is not compulsory that all parallel light rays should come parallel to the principal axis only when the object is placed in infinity means if you can take mirror like this so light rays may come like this it is a parallel beam only if not dear children so the light rays may come like this also so these are also parallel light rays only try to understand so this is what actually first case which we discussed now this is what actually second case we are going to discuss so now what happens so if you want to understand that we need to understand one more term very important it's called actually focal plane so it's very very important focal plane so you we must know that what actually focal plane then only we can understand children the plane which is passing through the focus considered the plane which is passing through the focus and perpendicular to the principal axis is called actually focal plane 
is called actually focal plane. So very very important. Now let us consider the parallel beam of light. The second case we are considering. So light rays are coming like this. So this is the first light ray is striking like this. So we'll try to understand the difference. This is parallel beam of light only. These all are parallel light rays only, but not parallel to the principal axis. In the previous case, we consider parallel light rays which are moving parallel to the principal axis. Then after reflection, what will happen? Come on, think. So this, let us say the first light ray, second, third light ray. So first light ray will be moving parallel to the principal axis. So this will move like this, this and by obeying the loss of reflection at each end. So by obeying the loss of reflection, this light ray has to move like this and this light ray also has to move through like this only. So this is first light ray and here is second light ray is coming like this only, it is coming like this, like this. So now what is happening dear children, after reflection all light rays are meeting at a common point but on the focal plane, it is a very very important. Where, what is the focal plane dear children, the plane which is passing through the focus and perpendicular to the principal axis is called focal plane. So this is called actually oblique incident dear children, oblique incident which means what, these are the parallel light rays but not parallel to the principal axis. Children. When a light rays are coming, when parallel light rays are coming parallel to the principal axis and the light rays are meeting at focus. But whereas when parallel light rays are coming but not parallel to the principal axis, but not parallel to the principal axis, then after reflection they are meeting, they are meeting on the focal plane. It is a very, very important. Then what are the characteristics? Characteristics are same as this. Because the light rays are meeting here only, it is highly diminished, all light rays are meeting, highly diminished it is. And here one more very important thing is that it is a real image only because light rays are meeting after reflection. Light rays are meeting after reflection. Okay children, just copy it, we will do now second case. Now children, let us consider the case where we are keeping the object beyond C. So let us consider one object. So object is place, here is, let us say, here is a object, let us name it as a A, B. So A, B is an object. Did children, as we discussed, as mainly we discussed about like you know four convenient rays day children, out of that four, you can take any two light rays in order to make a ray diagram actually. Here you may get one question, sir, why we need to consider two only, why not more than two? Of course children, you can consider the even more than two light rays also, but the minimum number of light rays required to make a ray diagram are two only. If you want, you can make a 3, 4, 5, 6, but as you go on taking more number of light rays, what happens? The situation will become too complicated to make the diagram. Otherwise, same result, whether with the 2 light rays or 2000 light rays, you will get the same result only. Now, dear children, so the first light ray which we are going to consider is that the light ray which is coming parallel to the principal axis. So, we are going to consider one very, very important light ray which is moving parallel to the principal axis, first one. Whereas, one more light ray which we are going to consider which is passing through the focus, which is passing through the focus. Now children, what will happen here after reflection and we know that if any light ray is passing parallel to the principal axis, after reflection, after reflection it has to pass through focus, it has to pass through focus, this is fine. And what happens with the second light ray which is passing through the focus day children? So, the light ray which is passing through the focus day children, after reflection it has to move parallel to the principal axis. It has to move like this. It has to move like this. Now look at that, where the light rays are meeting here, that is what very important. So this is a point where reflected light rays are meeting. So this will give you, this will give you actually the height of the image, this will give you the height of the image. So let us it is a A dash and B dash, it is very very important. Dear children, once again I repeat here, so object is placed C, at any point dear children, you can keep at C, before C, after C, whatever it may be. So here we consider the two convenient light rays, so one is coming parallel to the principal axis, after reflection it has to pass through the focus, whereas one more light ray which is passing through the focus dear children, after reflection it has to go, it has to go parallel to the principal axis. Such a way that what is happening here, they are meeting at this point. So this point will be the image position. Now let us write the characteristics of the image. So first one, 
they should learn we have to see the position of the image third one you have to talk about size it's very very important children look at here the object size is like this but the image size is like this so image size is smaller than that of the object size so we can say it's a diminished image it is what actually diminished image so very 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 important children so children when the object is placed beyond c where the image is formed between between center of curvature and focus what type of image is it it is a real and inward what about size it is diminished image okay children fine now we will see the third case where we are going to keep the object at the c children now we will see the case where we are keeping the object at c so here is a light ray which we are considering <coughs> such that it is going parallel to the principal axis and one more light ray we are considering such that it is going through the focus through the focus so children now what happens after reflection did children after reflection this first light ray the light ray which is coming parallel to the principal axis it has to pass through the focus how so it has to pass like this it's very very important children any light ray which is passing parallel to the principal axis after reflection it has to pass through the focus but what about second light ray the light ray which is passing through the focus did children which is passing through the focus after reflection it has to go parallel how will go like this so after reflection the light ray is passing parallel to the principal axis parallel to the principal axis now where they are meeting so exactly they are meeting at this point so here did children so this is a position of the image it's very very important so look at it did children so the light ray passing parallel to the principal axis after reflection moving passing through the focus the light ray which is passing through the focus after reflection it has to go parallel to the principal axis then the children they are meeting exactly at c only so where the image is going to be formed at c only it's very important now let us see the position first so image is formed children image is formed image is formed at c only at c only it's very very important means what this is a case where the position of the object and the position of the image is same actually okay children fine now what is the nature children after reflection light rays are meeting so it is a real image only and all real images are inverted only so it is real and inverted real and inverted image children one more very 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 important thing is that the size of the object is equal to size of the image so if this is 10 cm 10 cm then we will get as like 10 cm only so same size same size as it of the objects very very important so little image is formed at c only it is a real and inverted image and the size of the image is equal to the size of the object okay children copy it fine children now in this case object is placed between center of curvature and focus such a that we are taking one light ray parallel to the principal axis then after reflection what happens dear children this light ray has to pass through the focus has through the focus now children the second light ray dear children till now we consider the light ray which is passing through the focus right of course you can take that also if you will take that also you get the same result but let us take one more light ray which we consider that such a that it is incidenting at pole at pole with certain angle of incidence then what will happen dear children after reflection it has to reflected it has to reflected it's very 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 it has to reflected like this it has to reflected such a way that the angle of incidence also reflection also same if it is a theta so this also must be theta only which once again i'm saying you don't get confused so till now you have considered the second right light ray which is passing through the focus why not now if you can take now that also no problem if you can take the light ray which is passing through like this dear children again it will get same way only it's not a problem we will get the same result children whether we considered the light ray which is passing through the focus or the light ray which is incidenting at the pole we will get the same result now children look at here so where the light rays are meeting okay let us extend this principal axis x principal axis. so this is a point where the light rays are meeting so this will give you the size of the image as a b is object and here it will be a dash and b dash will be the image now let us write the characteristics of the image come on dear children can you guess 
where the image is formed and what are the nature what is the nature look at here so image is formed first point image is formed image is formed beyond c image is formed beyond c very very important image is formed beyond c then what is the nature it is real why do you children because the light rays are meeting after reflection real and inverted real and inverted and what about its size the size of the object is this much but the size of the image is this much so it is magnified image it is magnified image even you can write it as a enlarged image also even we can call it as a enlarged image also so children these are the characteristics of the image formed when the object is placed between center of curvature and focus between center of curvature focus don't get confused this is a focus between center of curvature and focus children in this case object is placed at f now let us see here so the first light ray which we considered is passing parallel to principal axis and the next light ray which is instanting at p at p now what happens to children if any light ray is passing parallel to the principal axis to children after reflection it has to pass it has to pass through the focus it has to pass through the focus at any cost it has to pass through focus only now dear children next light ray look at here this is a light ray it is instanting at pole of the pole of the concave mirror with an angle theta then what happens with the same angle it should get reflected with the same angle it will get reflected so such way that the light rays will go like this so with the same angle of reflection same thing if it is 30 degrees it should go with a 30 degrees only so the angle of reflection is a theta only now dear children so this will be the reflected light ray this will be the reflected light ray dear children even you can take even you can take here one more light ray if not you make it one out sir we consider the one light ray uh, uh, what we can say normal incidence case which we can say but we are not at all taking till so far we discuss all about five cases but we are not taking the normal incidence case of course you can take that also dear children so for example here the light ray is incidenting like this this is what actually you can take like this so this is normal incidence case here so light ray is incidenting perpendicular then what happens light ray has to move like this only so light ray has to move like this try to understand if you take properly with the scale if you can take this light ray is going like this only so its path is retraced children look at here its path is retraced whether you can take whether you can take the light ray incidenting at pole or you can take this that's what i'm saying convenient rays you can take any light rays the image position the image nature image size is not going to be changed very very important okay children fine so here we consider the two light rays we can of course you can consider this also if you don't want okay you leave it fine so here we consider the two light rays dear children in which one is moving parallel to the principal axis and one is incidenting at pole so then what is happening so first light ray has to pass through the focus and the second light ray according to the loss of reflection it gets reflected but try to observe dear children these two light rays so don't you think that these two light rays are parallel yes parallel light rays it's very 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 important very very important children parallel light rays are expected to meet at infinity expected to meet it so as they are expected to meet at infinity image is going to be formed at infinity only it's very important so as the object is placed at focus where the image is going to form so here image image is formed at infinity at infinity at infinity it's very very important at infinity and what is the nature so as the light rays are going to meet so definitely it is a real and inverted only then what about size dear children the size of the image always try to understand is decided the distance between the principal axis and the point where they are going to meet so as it is the principal axis where they are going to be at infinity means here somewhere else somewhere else somewhere else means the size keeps on increasing so it will be highly enlarged highly magnified image we will get it's very very important so it is highly magnified or we can say it is highly 
enlarged it is a highly enlarged okay you should find so these are this is the case where the object is placed at focus so you should learn the image is formed at infinity and it is a real and inverted because the light rays are going to meet actually and it is highly enlarged children this case is a very 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 important very 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 important again i am saying this is a case where concave mirror is going to form virtual image so in order to form the virtual image in order to get the virtual image with the concave mirror where the object must be placed object must be placed between focus and polarity sidechil so children here two light rays we considered look at here the first light ray and the second light ray so first light ray is incidenting normally at this point it children it is a normal incidence it's a normal incidence so already we discussed if any light ray is striking whether the convex mirror or concave mirror plane mirror it children its path must be retraced its path means it bounces back in the same path so here in this case also the light this light ray what happens it bounces back in the same path so it 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 has to pass like this so this light ray yeah, how it is coming it has to pass through the focus so its path is retraced its path is retraced so it is going like this only again it is coming back in the same path it is coming back in the same path then what about second light ray dear children so this is a light ray which is passing parallel to the principal axis after reflection it has to pass through the focus it has to pass through the focus children just try to observe these are not parallel light rays rather these are diverged light rays dear children these are diverged so the diverged they are going like this they are going like this so if you can take uh, this length of this you know light rays till infinity also they cannot meet why as they are diverged light rays as the distance increases what happens the distance between the diverged light rays increases so there is no chance of meeting only the children so whenever we do not have a chance like a reflected light rays they do not have a chance to meet then what we have to do we have to extend back we have to extend back so let us extend back so let us take this so let us try to extend back here so this is the light ray we are going to extend so when this light rays are extend back so observe it carefully here yes so this is a point where are they meeting no they are not meeting they are appearing to meet they are appearing to meet so this will be the position of the image this is a position of the image children so very 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 important very 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 important <coughs> and even you can notice that till now we denoted images with a straight line continuous line but now i am denoting with what dotted lines very very important so this dotted line represents what each children it is virtual image it's very very important in the exam also you have to represent with a dotted line only so children here is a b is object such way that here a dash b dash is a image a b b is very very important the children few things we have to notice so far we discussed five cases in all that five cases image is formed in front of the mirror but whereas here the children image is formed behind the mirror so virtual images always formed even you can take the case of plane mirror we discuss even in the case of plane mirror also so plane mirror in the case of plane mirror image is formed behind it not in front of it dear children so here one important thing you have to notice what is that always real images are formed in front of the mirror but whereas the virtual images are formed behind the mirror virtual images are formed behind the mirror now let us write the characteristics of the image dear children so first point very very important very very important where the image is formed so image is formed behind the mirror image is form mirror what is the nature children can you see the real image no chance at all why light rays are not meeting after reflection as light rays are not meeting and when they are extended back they are appear means children we are the person we are looking from here let us think from here we are observing then for us it happens this light rays are coming from this point we notice that this light rays appears as if they are coming from this point actually they are not coming in real they are appearing to meet when they are extended back actually they are appearing to meet so that is what actually virtual image so how the virtual image is formed dear children the reflected light rays do not meet when they are extended back the point where they are appearing to meet is actually the virtual image 
ओके सो इट इज वर्चुअल इमेज डी चिल्ड्रेन बाय डिफॉल्ट ऑल वर्चुअल इमेज आर इरेक्ट ओनली ऑल वर्चुअल इमेज आर इरेक्ट ओनली फाइन नाउ व्हाट अबाउट द साइज इट्स वेरी वेरी साइज लुक एट दिस हियर इज ओनली दिस मच दिस इज द साइज ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट बट वेयर एज हियर इट इज द साइज ऑफ द इमेज सो इट इज अ मैग्निफाइड वी कैन से दैट सो इट इज अ मैग्निफाइड इट इज मैग्निफाइड or we can say even enlarged also we can say it's enlarged children this is a case where concave mirror is used as a shaving mirrors very 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 we are going to discuss in detail of course shaving mirror so, so why concave mirror is used as a shaving mirror why concave mirror is used as a shaving mirror it's very very important so that we will discuss when com while comparing with the convex mirror and a plane mirror we will discuss in the next topic is that only okay children fine so this what actually Uh, image formed when the object is placed between focus and poles very important dear children and image is found behind the mirror and image is virtual and erect and it is a magnified dear children even if you want you can take one more light ray for example if you don't want to take this light ray okay then you can consider the light ray like this okay if you can take light ray like this also so what happen it gets reflected children it gets reflected Again, when you extend back, what happens? Up to a meter, this point only. Try to understand. So, it is not a matter whether you are taking this light ray, this light ray, this light ray. Whatever may be the light ray, even you can take a more ten light rays also. Result will be the same. Result will be the same. Okay, dear children, copy it. So, we have seen for a different positions of object, the image position will be different. At the same time, the nature and the size also will be changed. Now, let us try to summarize the cases. Almost we have discussed six cases. In the first five cases, it is giving a real image, whereas in the sixth case, concave mirror is forming virtual image. Now, let us try to summarize the all cases in a single page. So, look at here, dear children. So here, what happened, dear children? First, where we have placed object, children. Here, what we have to understand? You have to understand where we are placing the object, and where the image is formed, and what is the nature of the image and its size. So it's very important. First, what you have to notice? First, position of the image, then nature of the image. then we have to think we have to think about what it's even size also look at here teach in the first case we place the object at infinity we place the object at infinity then what happened all light rays are converged at a point f so their image is formed at focus and there as the light rays are meeting dear children it is a real image only real and inverted and what about its size it is highly diminished whereas in the second case dear children object is placed beyond c so it's very very important sir beyond c when object is placed beyond c dear children the image is formed between c and f between c and f and it is also real and inverted image and its size is diminished and third case we place the object at c children it is somewhat different case because here in this case only the object size is equal to the image size and even the object position is also equal to the image position so we are placing the object at c but image also formed at c only and it is real and inverted and as i told you that it is giving same size so the object size is equal to the image size now fifth fourth case dear children when the object is placed between c and f so where the image is formed image is formed beyond c and it is real and inverted but here what is happening here the image is enlarged image is enlarged now the fifth case dear children object is placed at focus when the object is placed at focus image is expected to meet at infinity as image is expected to meet means light rays are we are assuming that light rays are going to meet definitely it is real and all the elements are by default are inverted only so it is a real and inverted only and the size is dear children is highly enlarged or you can say it's a highly magnified also children the sixth case is so special case with the concave mirror so it is that here very 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 special case children it's very means very much important very means very much important why it's very much important in first five cases it is giving real and inverted image only but not in a sixth case so in a sixth case where the object is placed children object is placed between pole and focus or dear children we can say like this also between focus and mirror anything is okay 
anything is okay so it will it will be given whether it is a between pole and focus or focus and mirror anything is okay then what is happening here image is formed behind the mirror and it is so special it is a virtual and erected image and its size is magnified and here three more important points we have to understand from this tabular foundation it's very very important what is that first let us see each one here first let us see here when the object is placed at infinity image is formed at focus whereas when the object is placed at focus image is formed at infinity so which means what here first case and fifth case or vice versa it's very very important now look at here second case when the object is placed beyond c image is formed between c and f whereas observe the fifth or the fourth case when the object is placed between c and f image is formed beyond c so here look at here object position is beyond c image position is between c and f here object position is c and f but image position is beyond c so here 2 and 4 dear children second case and fourth case or vice versa second case and fourth case are vice versa and here third one and the sixth one is so special third one is image position object position image size object size is same whereas sixth case is so special it is giving virtual image only this is what actually one point which we have to notice first point which we have to notice from this tabular now second point what we have to notice children it's very important try to observe the object positions and try to observe the image positions means initially object is placed at infinity next to beyond c next at c next between c and f next at f means don't you think that dear children we are moving the object towards the mirror c means for example here 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 is a mirror let us say it is a mirror so what is happening here we are moving the objects towards the mirror we are moving the object towards the mirror then what is happening here image is going away from the mirror means what here here is very very important means the displacement the object is displaced towards the mirror whereas image is going away from the mirror means both are opposite to direction that's the second point which we have to notice and third point is children as we are moving the object towards the mirror observe the size first highly diminished next diminished next same size next enlarged next highly enlarged so what is happening slowly size of the image is increasing means as we are moving the object towards the mirror the image is moving away from the mirror at the same time its size is slowly it is increasing slowly it is increasing okay dear children so this what actually concave mirror and the image formations and their nature and size of the images convex mirror dear children first we'll discuss what is a convex mirror then terms related to the convex mirror and then we will discuss the image formation by a convex mirror children previously we discussed that either convex mirror or concave mirror they are made from the glass halo sphere so let us consider that this a part which is taken from the glass halo sphere such a way that the concave surface is silvered concave surface surface is silver so that this convex surface dear children acting like a reflecting surface it's very very important it's a very 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 important which we have to notice so what is a convex mirror dear children so the spherical mirror in which concave side is silver that is inner side is silver such a way that the bulged side the outer surface the convex surface is acting like a reflecting surface so such a mirror only we can call it as a what we can call convex mirror so it's very important for a concave mirror outer side is silver such a that inner side acts like a reflecting surface whereas for a convex mirror what is happening here inside is silver so that outside is acting like a reflecting surface now dear children let us see here so this mirror this convex mirror is a part we can imagine as and in which here is a center children it's very very important so children so the center of the the center the center of the glass halo sphere in which convex mirror is a part is called center of curvature we will represent with a letter c we will represent with a letter c and dear children the geometric center the geometric center of the the geometric center of the convex mirror either is a convex or concave mirror whatever it may be it's a geometric center we can call it as a pole 
we can call it as a pole and the axis which connects which connects let us say p c so it will be x p c x we can call it as a principal axis it is principal axis it is principal axis the line which is passing or which is joining pole and the center of curvature is called principal axis literally the distance between pole and center of curvature is called radius of curvature radius of curvature even it is a radius of a glass hollow sphere in which our spherical mirror is a part like that also we can take and each other, one more very very important thing look at here from this point to this point from here to here what actually can we say that it is a diameter yes we can say that it is a diameter of the spherical mirror so whatever it may be the mirror it's a diameter of a spherical mirror we can call it as a day children aperture it's very very important so the diameter of this either it is a convex mirror or in the case of concave mirror also the diameter only we can call it as a aperture now one very very important the special thing of convex mirror is that day children for suppose if any light ray is coming like this if any light ray is coming like this then what happens to this light ray addition what happens to this light ray so this light ray look at here this light ray gets gets diverse like this diverse like this and it appears as if it is coming point on the principal axis so this point only we can call it as a focus this point only we can call focus children it's very very important in the case of concave mirror how did we define the focus so in the case of concave mirror the point on the principal axis where all reflected light rays will meet or the point on the principal axis where light rays will meet after reflection is called actually focus in the case of concave mirror but whereas in the case of convex mirror how to define each children so here as the light ray is getting diverse it appears as if it is coming from the point on the principal axis means this is a point where light rays are not meeting rather they appear to meet when they extend back when they extend back they appear to meet so that point only we can call it as a focus children here here light rays are not meeting at this focus they are appearing to meet so it is not a real focus so we can say that it is a virtual focus only children concave mirror has a real focus whereas convex mirror has virtual focus very well. why we are calling it as virtual focus because light rays are not meeting they are appearing as if they are coming or as if they are meeting at that point and children the distance between pole and focus the distance between pole and focus we can call it as a focal length and how focal length is related to the radius of curvature dear children so radius of curvature is always equal to the double the focal length or we can write the focal length of any mirror either it is a convex mirror or a concave mirror is equal to the half of the radius of curvature half of the radius of the curvature so dear children this what actually convex mirror and terms related now before going to discuss the image formed by a convex mirror we need to discuss the important light rays that is what the convenient light rays which we are going to select so that we will be getting the good image formation by a convex mirror let us discuss that children let us see the convenient rays the first one is that children so here is first let us take here is a convex mirror here is so inner side is silver so here is its principal axis so children here is center of curvature exactly focus should be middle and here is a pole the children so if any light ray is coming parallel to the principal axis i repeat once if any light ray is coming parallel to the principal axis the children what happens after reflection the children so light ray gets diverged light ray gets diverged such way that it appears as if it is coming from the focus it's very 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 important very very important so here the first light ray what we consider we are considering that the light ray which is coming parallel to the principal axis then after reflection what will happen it gets a diverse such way that it appears as if it is coming from the focus so this is a first convenient light ray which we are going to consider now dear children look at that second one dear children now look at here if any light ray is coming like this which means what this light ray when it extended when it extended what happens 
it appears as if it is passes through the focus like that it is incidenting but after reflection what happens teacher after reflection it passes parallel to the principal axis children it's very 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 important it passes parallel to the principal axis this light ray passes parallel to the principal axis this is a second light ray children can observe these two light rays these two are vice versa if any light ray is coming parallel to the principal axis after reflection gets diverse such way that it appears as if it is coming from the focus but whereas the light ray which is incidenting on the convex mirror such a way that it appears as if it passes through the focus but after reflection what is happening it is moving parallel to the principal axis this is the second light ray now the third one which light ray is very very important you children yes now you children we are taking considering a light ray such a way that this light ray appears as if it passes through the center of curvature which means what is already we discussed in the case of concave mirror if any light ray is passing through the center of curvature or appear as if it passes through the center of curvature that will be the normal incidence at that point so at this point it will be the normal then what happens its path is retraced back again its path is retraced back even you can take if one light ray is going like this for example like this so it appears as if it passes through the center of curvature only but here what happens this light ray path is retraced back its path is retraced back now let us see the fourth one fourth. so children if any light ray is incidenting at an angle of incidence with a certain angle of incidence then what happens to children what happens it gets reflected children one more very important important thing whatever may be the nature of the mirror whether it is a convex mirror concave mirror or plane mirror what happens light rays will obey the laws of reflection means what happens so light ray gets reflected such as that angle of incidence equal to the angle of reflection so this light ray gets reflected with equal angle with equal angle such with that this angle also theta only this angle also theta only so dear children these are the convenient rays which we are going to consider in order to construct the ray diagram for convex mirror okay dear children just copy it now dear children now we will see the case where object is placed at infinity so where the image is going to be formed and what are the characteristics of the image form let us see dear children so here is convex mirror and here is a pole dear children in a previous what when we are discussing about a concave mirror also we discussed when object is placed at infinity how the light rays are going to be dear children it's very very important so when the object is placed at infinity dear children we will be getting parallel beam of light it's very very important so let us consider two parallel beam of light like this they will be coming first one and let us take a second one dear children they are coming parallel to the principal axis they are coming parallel to the principal axis and dear children and we discussed what we discussed the convenient rays we discussed there it is the first one if any light ray is coming parallel to the principal axis of convex mirror what happens to children this light ray gets diverged so this light ray gets diverged so like this it gets diverged so very 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 important even this light ray also gets diverged like this and these two light rays appears as if they are coming from the focus as if they are coming from the focus teacher actually they are not meeting when you extend back they appear they appear to meet at a focus so which means what image is going to be formed at a focus image is going to be formed at a focus so now what can we say about the nature of the image children as already we discussed after reflection if light rays are meeting actually then we will obtain real image but dear children are the light rays meeting after reflection no chance at all here because they are divergent light rays they cannot meet but the when they extend back they are appearing to meet at focus so children then what is the position of the image so image is formed at focus only now let us write the characteristics of the image formed the first what can we say we have to talk about the image position so the children image is formed so children this is the first case with convex mirror convex mirror so in first case object is placed at infinity so where the image is formed at focus it is a virtual and erect and it is highly diminished now let us see the second case with a convex mirror 
children now we are going to discuss about the second case here yeah, don't get confused by seeing the, the heading just you forget about the heading actually now try to observe here so here i'm going to take a two cases dear children at the end of this case you will get a full clarity look at your dear children so here here is a case we have taken and object is placed at a certain distance from the convex mirror children in order to make a ray diagram you know we need to take a convenient light rays any what we discuss about four light rays dear children out of that four you can take any two light rays so in that first i am taking the light ray which is coming parallel to the principal axis this light ray is coming parallel to the principal axis one light i have taken now one more light ray which i have taken it appears as if it passes through the center of curvature dear children if any light ray which is coming parallel to the principal axis after reflection what happens after reflection it gets diverged which is very 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 important it gets diverged it gets diverged like this what about second light ray did you look at here this light ray appears as if it passes through the center of curvature passes through the center of curvature means any light ray if it appears as if it passes through the center of curvature that will be the normal incidence then what happens the, its path is retraced back its path is retraced back main digital end so this light ray gets reversed in the same path in the same path now look at this this is first a reflected light ray here is a second reflected light ray digital end how the image is formed either the light ray light rays must meet of reflection or they appear to meet look at here these two light rays are diverged light rays they do not have a chance to meet at all then what we have to do we have to extend back so now try to extend back dear children so when these two light rays extend back so this appears as if coming from the focus here and when you extend this light ray back yes so this is a point dear children this is a point where light rays are appearing to meet children i repeat once appearing to meet appearing to meet so it is a virtual image it must be with a dotted line it must be with a dotted line only so to highlight this let me use black is better black color so here this is a image position it is a dash b dash a dash b dash dear children so this is a case where image is formed now let us see here once again what is the position of the image dear children image is formed between poke pole and focus let us write here image is formed between image is formed between pole and focus first characteristic of the image the second one we need to talk about its nature dear children here is it real image or virtual image it is virtual image only why because light rays are not meeting they are appearing to meet when they are extended back so it is a virtual image and dear children all virtual images are erect all virtual images are erect and third one dear children now let us compare the size this is the size of the object and it is the size of the image so the image size is diminished the image size is smaller than that of the object size so we can say it is a diminished image we can say it as a diminished image it is a diminished image now let us come to this case actually so what is the difference between these two cases you will come to know that at the end of this discussion okay children fine now let us take one convenient light ray which is coming parallel to the principal axis like this so here is a light ray which is coming parallel to the principal axis after reflection what will happen dear children this light ray gets diverse this light ray gets diverse like this that is fine now let us consider one more light ray other than this passing through appearing to pass through center of curvature or a focus that is a common only so let us take one more light ray such way that it exactly it is falling or incidenting at pole of the convex mirror at pole it is a pole at pole of the convex mirror then what happens dear children this light ray gets this light ray gets diverged it is a, a let us say so this light ray diverged with same angle of incidence same angle of incidence now dear children look at here this is one reflected light ray and it is one more reflected light ray do they meet no they cannot meet because they are again diverged light rays then what we have to do we have to extend backward so look at here when this light ray prolonged backward appears as if it passes through the focus as if it appears coming from the focus and the second light ray extend back yes so children where they are appearing to meet this is a point where they are appearing to meet so here is a 
image is formed. What type of image is it? It is a virtual image only. Why? Because the light rays are appearing to me. So it is A dash and a B dash. Now let us study the characteristics of the image now. Dear children, don't you think that image is formed between pole and focus? Yes, it is like this only between pole and focus, correct? And it is virtual and direct. Yes, it is a virtual and direct. Third one, it is image size is smaller. That is a diminished image. It is a diminished image. Which means what, dear children? What can we conclude from these two, dear children? Not only here, you can keep anywhere object. Here, 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 here. Anywhere you can keep object. Always image is formed between pole and focus. Always, dear children, always. Always image position is in between pole and focus. And always it is a virtual image. Always it is diminished image only. So this is a speciality. This is a speciality of the convex mirror. Children, it's very important. Concave mirror forms real image in first five cases. But last case, it forms virtual image. But whereas convex mirror, whatever may be the position of the object, always it forms virtual image. This is what actually we have to understand. Children, here we have two beautiful questions. Uh, first question, which of the following mirror gives virtual image? Option A is plane mirror, option B is convex mirror, option C is concave mirror. And second question is that, which of the following mirror gives only virtual image? And the options are A. Yes, start thinking and text the answer through comment. Come on, comment the answer. Think once properly, teacher. If you can think, definitely you get the answer. You have to think. Think and comment the answer. Okay? Just fine. Children, it's very important. Let me tell you. Hope you have tried. Okay? Look at here. So, which of the following mirror gives virtual image? Children, plane mirror gives virtual image. Convex mirror gives virtual image. Concave mirror also gives virtual image. But second question, see that. Seems to be saying. Look at here. Which of the following mirror gives only virtual image decisions very 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 important this is a word which will give a confusion so many students they do not concentrate on this word called only so only virtual image means what plane mirror and convex mirror not concave mirror why because concave mirror not only forms virtual image but also forms real image so when the word is mentioned only virtual image you have to go for plane mirror and convex mirror only because the concave mirror forms virtual image and as well as Real image also. Okay, children, copy this. Children, now we will discuss the applications of spherical mirror. In that, first we will discuss about the applications of concave mirror. Children, first let us see how concave mirror is used as a reflector. Where we will use it as a reflector? Reflector in a torchlight or in you know in headlights of automobiles. Let us you can take a bike or a car or auto. So why it is preferred as a reflector in automobiles? Look at it, children. So here is, you know, uh, some, it will be like this. It almost looks like this. Here is, let us say, here is a headlight. Okay. Now. So this will be digital and try to understand this outward is silvered, which means what inner side is a reflecting surface. And then where do we keep that bulb, you know, digital and exactly we will arrange such a that the bulb, the bulb will be exactly at focus to children. Then what happens when the bulb is arranged at focus? So definitely we will be getting all light rays like this, all light rays like this only. Dear children, just recall the case where the object is placed at focus. What happens? Light rays are sent parallel to infinity, parallel to infinity. So this light rays also what happens? Gets reflected and they will move parallel there yes. as a as a reflector in automobile, especially in you know, headlights of automobiles. You can observe. You can observe in a you know uh, car headlight and even torch light will be same only and auto what not actually in almost all automobile case only here con camera uses as a reflector so children this is actually what it is which case when the object is placed at focus when the object is placed at focus we will be getting parallel beam of light so this application we will use in automobiles okay children copy it now the second case is Concave mirror is used as a boy's mirror. Is used as a boy's mirror. Children, don't get confused. What is this boy's mirror? Do we have a boy's mirror actually? It is not that actually. So it is used as a shaving mirror. It is used as actually shaving mirror. It is used as a shaving mirror. So why actually 
concave mirror is preferred as a shaving mirror. Children, just let us recall the sixth case where object is placed, where we are placing, for example, here object sixth case. In a sixth case, what happened, here, children? So this is a special case which is used as a shaving mirror. Means, dear children, if you can bring the object some other way between pole and focus, you are getting enlarged image. So then, how it is used as a shaving mirror, children? Sometimes what happens after shaving, especially you know, uh, it's I cannot say that it's boys even the grown. We can say you know your dads, your uncles, you know they might be knowing here. So after shaving, after taking shaving, what happens? You know, sometimes skin appears like you know when you can look at in a normal mirror, it appears okay, it's smooth only. But the moment when you touch, you can feel somewhere it is hairy there, but it can't be seen in a plain mirror. But whereas here concave mirror has ability to show small tiny object also enlarged. So even a small hair particle is there on your skin also. It is shown enlarged. So that is the reason concave mirror, especially in this sixth case, is used as a shaving mirror. Okay, children. Now we'll discuss about applications of convex mirror. Uh, convex mirror. It is used as a reflector in a street lights. Don't get confused. Sir, uh, you said that concave mirror uses a reflector. This is the case how we are going to use it different. For suppose, dear children, let us say here, here is a street light lamp or something like this. It will be there like this. Just imagine such a that here the bulb is arranged. Just imagine situation. So what will happen? Light rays will be coming. Of course, downward also they will go. But let us consider these light rays. So here is light rays. And dear children, convex mirror has ability to diverge the light rays in all directions. It cannot converge. It can diverge the light rays. So what happens? These light rays. Will get diverse. These light rays will get diverse so that maximum area is covered. Maximum area is covered. That is the reason why actually convex mirror is preferred as a reflector in a street lamps. Okay, children. Children, it is a very very special and important application of convex mirror. So convex mirror is used as a rear view mirror. Children, here before going to discuss why convex mirror is preferred as a rear view mirror, let us see why can't we use plane mirror as a rear view mirror. Dear children, because of two reasons here. Look at here. The first reason is that its field of view, when you consider the plane mirror, let us assume, let us imagine, for example, we are using plane mirror as a rear view mirror. Then what happens, dear children? The field of view is less, which means what? Maximum area behind you is, for example, you are driving, dear children. So what is our intention? Our intention, why are we using actually mirror there? So that it has to cover maximum area behind us, so that we can see maximum vehicles. But here the minus point of plane mirror is that its field of view is more, it's, sorry, its a field of view is less. Whereas come to the rear view mirror, children. Its field of view is more, means it can cover maximum field behind you. That is the specialty of the convex mirror. The first part. And the second point is that, dear children, just imagine in front of a, like for example, you are using a plane mirror. If you are using a plane mirror as a, a rear view mirror, then what happens? For example, here big glare is coming, let us say. This much big glare is coming. Then what will be the size of that big glare, dear children? The image also same because that plane mirror will give you equal size. Just imagine a situation your mirror will be this much size only and behind you a big lorry is coming means even you cannot see one single lorry then how can you see many vehicles which are coming. So it will become too difficult to drive when we use plane mirror as a rear view mirror. Then come to the rear view mirror children. The speciality of the rear view mirror is what? Whatever may be the size of the object. For example, in front of this only, for example, such a big glare is coming, like this same big glare is coming. Then what happens? Its image is from very, very small, small, very chota lorry we can. Children, chota lorry means won't be this much, very small lorry actually. The thing is that actually its image is diminished. So that is the reason why are we preferring convex mirror. Children, one second I am saying you, why are we preferring convex mirror as a rear view mirror? Because of two reasons. It always forms diminished and virtual image and near the mirror. That is the first point. The second point is that its field of view is more. Listen, other than this, have you ever noticed whenever you go to any shopping malls, you know, shopping or somewhere else, the theaters also, what is happening nowadays? They are keeping a big mirror near the parking area. So that is what, children, that is convex mirror only. So why are we preferring? Just you try to observe whenever next time when you go to the like, you know, any shopping mall somewhere else, whenever your parents are parking their vehicle, just try to observe. As you are going like this, you know, what happens? Their size is appeared very, very small and it can cover even maximum area also. So that is the reason actually why convex mirror is used as a 
even rear view mirror and even in a parking also convex mirror only is preferred did you learn so these are the concepts of spherical mirrors where we discuss about the terms related to the spherical mirrors and even dear children there we discuss about the characteristics of the image formed by concave mirror and convex mirror so it's very very important thing so don't buy her the diagrams so you who you have to understand the you have to understand the convenient rays which are required to make a ray diagrams once you are okay with the convenient light as day children you can play like anything with the ray diagrams and their applications okay children thank you so much all the very best